Let's depart Pripyat for a while and head on over to the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. For today is the 29th anniversary of the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. In the hours after the accident, people ran down this very road and onto the bridge of death, which crosses the railway lines. There were giant rainbow-colored flames of burning graphite to be seen from this bridge. And that's the last thing those people saw, because the wind was blowing from that direction and they received fatal doses of radiation. All of them. But nowadays, thanks to decontamination and time, the Geiger counter is merely faintly clicking. Just ahead is the town sign of Pripyat, just there on the left. The road on the right goes to an even more radioactive part of the Red Forest, but even this part is quite radioactive as you can hear. And up there on the left is the new safe confinement, and just behind it, the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. And as you can hear, the levels of radiation have greatly increased around here. There is the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, or more like the old crumbling sarcophagus. And the new chimney, the replacement chimney, the old one is gone. They disassembled it and replaced it with a new, smaller one in order to provide ventilation. In Ukraine, very, very similar, but without an uh, end. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Chernobylska atomna elektrostancja. Chernobylska ja atomna ja elektrostancja. Ja. Ja. Right. Enough time fooling around, learning Ukrainian. This is the construction site of the new safe confinement. So that wall you can see over there, 27 meters high, mm -hmm. uh, is specially constructed for the protection of uh, the personnel of Navarka uh, for radiation because they were too close to uh, the sarcophagus. It's, uh, we may say, the Novarka's know-how <laughs> because it is not uh, written in the uh, project in the design and they decided to do it by themselves yeah naturally they agreed with uh, Chernobyl and PP this uh, this wall or the, the construction of this wall uh, because Novarka signed the contract with CNPP of the building they prepare the place for the technological processing building it will be necessary for the future uh, operation of this uh, new safe part of the arch so to say Right on, let's go inside. This is where we're standing with that wall and behind that wall the blown reactor of Chernobyl. And this is where we're currently walking, the Golden Corridor and onto reactors 1 and 2. You can see that the Chernobyl reactors are pretty much double units, unit 1 and 2 and unit 3 and 4 as a block. And just below, the turbine hall and control room. So. This is so-called uh, golden core mm -hmm, yes. <laughs> because of these uh, well, yellow walls. Yeah. It was covered after the accident. So, for you to understand, uh, the left side uh, is the side for the control rooms. So, for unit one first, then uh, uh, central co uh, control room, then unit two, and then over there unit three and four. To the right, this is level uh, 9.2 and uh, the reactors are on the level <coughs> of 20 meters to the right. Behind the control room means behind this wall, then again wall, again behind, yeah. uh, there is a turbine hall. Ah yes, okay. The turbine hall is for chain PP, is without any separation walls. It is the whole, for each unit, two turbines. When PP was in operation. Yes, capacity. of course. Uh, so uh, the power of one unit is 1000 megawatt. So this is the central control room. Here is the shift supervisor of PP. I came to PP after the accident. It was 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. So, our place of visit is control room of unit number two. Okay. 
just give you a cook there. All the control rooms of the units are the same. So this is the way it looked in unit number four too. So one, two, three boards. This is the board and for the senior engineer or senior operator, how to say it, uh, for turbines. This man was responsible for the operation of turbines, reliable operation of turbines. TG4, TG3, turbine number three, number four. I see, okay. It's unit number two. Unit number one is turbine number one, number two. Then, here is the working place for the to engineer, which he was responsible for the, uh, may say, uh, for the supplying of the reactor by water, oil, and mm -hmm. other, other things. And this board is for him. That one. Oh, that's a fuel channel, the, eh? Yes, yeah. is the, for the reactor, so called. Senior engineer for the reactor because he was responsible for the uh, refueling and he was concerned with the uh, central hall. You can see there on the photo turbine hall. One of the turbine. Oh, nowadays uh, in the uh, turbine hall there is the process of uh, of dismantling of okay. uh, equipment. You know, so that's what they are doing. Huh? Yes, because uh, or decommissioning, because we Chernobyl nuclear power plant now at the stage of decommission. You can see these numbers. This is the number of the channels. Mm -hmm. In each channel, you know, there is the fuel. And the total number of fuel assembles are 1,693. The total number of all of the uh, channels is 2,088. You see? And uh, also the total number of uh, the fuel is um, 200 tons. When uh, we wish uh, to change some channel, uh, we, uh, the operator has the information here also also on these sensors and he gives the command to the central hall uh, and he is coordinated with the shift supervisor mm -hmm. because the fourth man here is the shift supervisor of this unit they prepare the fuel means uh, the fuel should be in the central hall the fueling machine you can see the fueling machine uh, with the help of this machine, they uh, load uh, the uh, fuel assembly inside. Then they uh, move uh, this uh, machine on the channel. Before this, they open the plug. Uh, the upper core and uh, the refueling machine, there is the, a big place, mm -hmm. spare place, mm -hmm. as to, so to say. And there is a big, big radiation. Yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> why nobody is. Uh, the operators are in the operator's room. It's possible to do it uh, during the operation of the reactor. Yes, this yeah. is the advantage of this type of the reactor. Yeah, you can just take out the spent fuel yes, and then yes. put it we in. Not, we need not to stop the reactor, the operation of the reactor. Spent fuel, first of all, they put it in uh, the uh, pool, two pools here on both, on both sides, like this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they put it inside the water. The fuel is there can be uh, approximately uh, up to two, two or three years. It, it's it's better to see it uh, uh, when the reactor was in operation. Well, Just yes. now it, it is impossible. I can't uh, uh, show you, uh, but uh, uh, in sometimes I, I saw the operators. He uh, knew everything. Mm -hmm. He knew everything, like this. Yes. Yep, believe it or not. They continued to run the other reactors, with everything around being contaminated from Unit 4 exploding all over the place, until the year 2000. That is 14 years after the Chernobyl accident, after Unit 4 blew up. Until that very day, the reactor right next to it, Unit number 3, was in full operation. Remember those? Yep, we found one of these displays in Chernobyl 2, the Duga array. What was this panel? In the, yes, yeah, exactly. It's the same. That's why yeah. I was wondering what they use it for. Yeah. And here are Nixie tubes. Did you see them? Very nice. Just in case you were wondering, this control room is pretty clean. 
Only about three times normal background radiation. But what was that thing on the table? Well, it's like a surface contamination check monitor. And the second to uh, minus one. Yep, pretty sensitive if it measures and counts per second. Quite cool. <laughs> Still in perfect working condition, same as their dial plate telephones. Let's leave reactor 2's control room behind and move on down the golden corridor. This might just be the collection point for the Pripyat laundry. Cool. Oh, it's a little more radiation here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are going now closer to unit uh, three and four. Yes, so I can see that on the scimitar. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. That building is uh, for unit three. Mm -hmm. Oh, the train, yeah. Fuel storage over there. Fuel storage is on the territory of Chen PP, yeah. It was uh, commissioned uh, fuel storage in 1986. And is there still fuel inside there? Yes, yes, oh. yes. Okay, so that's why there are people working. Yes, more than 21,000 uh, fuel assemblies are inside now. Wow, okay. Because all the reactors are empty now. Yes, okay, so they just put it all in there yes. and then... Control room, unit number three. After this point, there are no more golden walls but just these old crumbly walls. As you're so used to seeing from Pripyat and everything. Not quite as bad, not scavenged, but still you can see we're walking to somewhere different. Walking the corridors where people received fatal doses of radiation precisely 29 years ago, and we're even wearing the same clothes as they did. Using the same equipment even, like for radiation monitoring, or the telephones. So behind this door, approximately 70 meters, this the control room of unit number four. Yes, for me it's easy. <laughs> you do it every day. Yes, because I do it every day, in a day, so also. Rock solid door, and behind it, the remains of unit number four. Just in case you're wondering, we're now walking towards the pumping station between units number 3 and 4. So this is the memorial, so-called place, to Valery Khodemchuk. Valery Khodemchuk was the senior operator of the circulating. And uh, during the accident, at the same time, before before this time, so he was given the task to go to check his equipment at the the chain, at the circulating pumps, and at the same time, uh, the Chen PP personnel started testing the equipment, that experiment so called. Yes. Unfortunately, the accident happened, and he uh, Valeria left there because uh, all. The, the uh, equipment, the pipes, and so on and so forth collapsed down. Unfortunately, he wasn't found. 
And uh, after the accident, here there was an entrance there, and from Unit 3 to Unit 4. Mm -hmm. After the accident, it was closed, and they de we decided to put a memorial uh, yeah. for the memorial place here. To <coughs> yeah, you can hear that it's closed. These are the palms of unit number three, but just beyond that wall, where Larry Khodemchuk lies buried. Four pumps. Here and on that side also four pumps. Uh, at the same time, six uh, pumps were in operation, you see. They are very, very, very big. Yes. It's, it's the, only the upper part we can see, because all other equi it's down. equipment is down on this pump. Well. Well, there's one little merciful thing about Valery Fedemchuk's terrible death here. In case he wasn't crushed to death instantaneously, but was suffering with pain stuck under some debris, then he was killed after just a few hours because of the radiation. What a fucking terrible way to die. But at least it was semi-quick in any case. The radiation levels are nowhere near dangerous anymore, but they're still quite high, so it's time to leave again. So this video is not about the beautiful wild zone that Chernobyl is nowadays, but about the dead zone it became back then, when a lot of people died. This shall be a memorial of those.